This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Guys, and we're live back here in Think Tech Studios Hawaii with the Prince of Investing show live here and but shoot broadcast live in Hollywood, Hawaii. But you guys know I'm here in Denver, Colorado. But thank you guys for tuning in. Guys, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button and all the other great stuff. As you guys can already see, we have a very, very special guest with us here today in 12-year NFL veteran, linebacker Jared Johnson. He called us all the way from Florida. We're going to sit down with him. We're going to talk about his NFL career, uh, life before the NFL, life during the NFL, you know, financial literacy, all the other great stuff, time in the league, and life at the league. We get to all of that. But you guys stay tuned. You guys stay, keep it locked right here. And as always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you guys don't have a lot of time, but we're going to jump straight into it. So without further ado, I know you guys are in tune in to hear my mouth all day. Got to bring in our special guest. Mr. Jerry Johnson, how you doing today, sir? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing outstanding. First of all, I want to say thank you for stopping by and spend a little time with a peon like myself. I greatly appreciate it. Oh, oh no, ain't nobody thing, man. I don't know about that peon thing. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but this is but this is the thing, right? You know, I I know it's a big week, you know, uh, in college football. And I was, you know, me myself. I'm originally from Georgia, and uh, you know, I was looking doing some of your history, and I found one little discrepancy down there, you know. That you um bachelor <laughs> University of Alabama alumni. That's right. <clears throat> you guys are going to the college football league, you know, I mean college football championship against Georgia here. And uh with that being said, me being originally from Georgia, you already know I'm rooting for the Bulldogs. I just wanna say, man, you guys already got enough championships. Let us get one, okay? <laughs> you know, this I know. It, it, that's the funny thing about being an Alabama fan is just watching how mad everybody else gets. But we have something in, co something in common is half the country, more than half the country, hates the SEC, and it just makes me happy that it's an all-SEC championship game. So uh, we get to enjoy that and the, the build-up to the game, and we'll be uh, we'll be enemies the day of. But until then, I'm going to enjoy making everybody else mad. <laughs> I, was, I knew they were going to get Alabama in there some type of way. But that's with, right. that, with that being said, for people out there who don't know who Jerry Johnson is, who is Jerry Johnson? Who am I? Now I'm a, I'm a retired uh, NFL linebacker, um, I'm, and I'm a family man. I, I do some radio on the side. Um, I run a fishing charter on the side. But my uh, everyday job is I'm a stay-at-home dad. Um, I'm around the house a lot when I'm not traveling on the water or something like that. But um, you know, I I, uh, I pride myself on, on on being a good husband and a good father. Oh, awesome, awesome. Now. Going back on your history, right? You played for played for University of Alabama. You done some great things down there, and then you went off and got drafted by uh, the Baltimore Ravens. How was that feeling of getting drafted into the NFL? It was good. I mean, I, I didn't I didn't so much enjoy the draft process, uh, the combine, and Senior Bowl and stuff like that. I mean, it's a it's a straight up meat market. So I, I, it was very stressful. Um, you get a lot of people pulling at you. A lot of people. Telling, telling, telling you things that you, they think you want to hear. It's not real healthy. Um, I didn't. I don't really enjoy the attention or limelight or anything like that. Um, so once I did get draft day, I thought I was just like everybody else. I thought I was going on the first day. Ended up going on the second day. Um, but it could. I could have got drafted in a better place in a better spot. I was a fourth round draft pick, which ended up being a perfect spot for me. Um, and then to a team that I played for for nine years, um, had a, a great career in Baltimore. Uh, it was a perfect team that fit my personality and, and my style of play. And then I went on to uh, San Diego and finished out my career with three years of San Diego. Okay. Now looking back on that, you know, so you got to play with some of the some pretty um, big names, some Hall of Famers there. You got uh, Ed Reed behind you. You know, learning yeah. from Ray Lewis. Uh, you know. Joe Flacco there, uh, right. Suggs, you know, Suggs, well, Suggs, Suggs is there. How was it like with playing with all these Hall of Famers and being on the Ravens, known for defense and being a linebacker? Right. No, it, it was awesome. I mean, you know, there was um, – uh, early in my career, I had the opportunity to play with Deion Sanders for a couple of years. 
Me and Terrell Suggs were uh, in the same draft class. He's still one of my closest friends. Um, but the, the guy there is, is Ray Lewis. You know, he's the standard maker. He's, he's uh, the bar. He set the bar for the rest of the players to live up to. Um, but uh, I was definitely fortunate to have um, a lot of really good players around me and also a, re- a lot of really good coaches, like for Chuck Pagano and Rex Ryan and Dean Pease, and I can go down the list of the, the number of good coaches that uh, I had the opportunity to play for. Okay. Now, you see, you know, when you're going through this meat, <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny when you said that, the little meat market process, going through the NFL, when you're going through this and, you know, you finally get drafted, how, you know, Throughout your NFL career, since you had a pretty long career, 12 years, if you don't mind saying it here, how much money do you think you probably accumulated throughout that time? <laughs> um, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um, I, 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 I signed a three-year deal. My rookie, my rookie deal was a three-year deal. Um, and then I signed a one-year tender. Um, and then I signed uh, a five-year deal. That was my first. That was my three contracts in Baltimore, and then I signed a four-year deal with San Diego, in which I played three of it. Um, but I, I don't, I don't know the the uh, the exact number. Um, but it was, you know, I had a, I had a uh, fortunate career. I, I played a lot longer than I than I that I even anticipated me playing. Um, you know, and it was, uh, you know, it, it was, um, it was definitely I had the opportunity to live a dream. Um, but finance, but money wise, shit, I don't, uh, shoot, I guess I had to add it up. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, since you know, when you make that type of money, you don't even know what you made. You probably know, probably got a couple million, pretty sure it was a couple millions, right? But <laughs> throughout, throughout, that, throughout that time, you know, so you, you guys know who to call. You need to borrow five dollars, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, but throughout, throughout that time, did you make any investments? Yeah, I did. I've, I've, uh, I, I learned a lot. My, my financial career, what I call you, your, uh, your, your, your uh, focus outside of football and family. You know, um, they're definitely become. You, you definitely take on a lot of responsibility once you start making money in the NFL. Um, things definitely change. Uh, you don't particularly change, mm-hmm. but um, a lot of people around you, the way people view you, uh, and I remember the first time because you know I was you know I was a C average student. Um, mm-hmm. You know I was your typical jock. I was a, you know I'm, a, I'm from the country, very mm-hmm. small town, and I remember I was going through the draft process and I was visiting with my uncle, and he started asking me questions about. Um, re, uh, he was wanting to refinance his house, and he was asking my opinion on how he should refinance his house. And I'm sitting there like, "Why are you asking me this?" I mean, you know. But it, the point is, is that just because he knew I was going to get drafted and start making money, he automatically thought that I was like this financial guru that I knew <laughs> the things that he needed to be doing with with his financial life and. I hadn't even, first of all, I didn't even know what he was talking about at the time. <laughs> and I hadn't signed my contract yet, so I was still basically living like a college kid. And that, that was my first indicator of how, you know, people's view of you changes once they associate you with the NFL. Wow. Okay. So, so you going through these, what are some other examples of how people treat you a little different, you know, once they find out, you know, you know, you got to get drafted or you're a prospect? I'm sorry, can you re- repeat the question? Like, what are some other examples? Like, you had the example of your uncle about oh. refinancing. How, what are yeah. some other well, I mean, yeah, you, you, you could just friends? be out socially. Yeah, you could be out socially, be at a bar or a social event or whatever. And, you know, I, I dress normal. I'm, I'm a bigger guy, but I don't, you know, I'm not going to, you know, you're not going to automatically know that I play in the NFL. And, you know, you get to talking to people and they might, you know, be bragging about themselves or just kind of treating you like, you know, you're you're no, you know, they're not nobody, but they're just not really paying. And all of a sudden, the minute they find out that that you play in the NFL, their attitude changes. Their the way they look at you, every the way they the questions they ask, like they auto, automatically. Um, it's one thing about the NFL is it automatically makes people's viewpoint and like they almost you know they're either intimidated by you or. They like want to start bragging about themselves. They're like measuring up, or they're they're kissing your butt and they're telling you how great you know. But nobody, it's it's rare for somebody 
to meet you and just treat you like a normal human. They're always either going to go in a negative way or an overly positive way. And a lot of times I'm like, hold on, now you were just talking to me normal a second ago before you found out a play, and also the final you play, they're going to treat you a different way. But you just you got to learn to deal with that. One thing I always try to do is, is treat everybody the same, no matter if it's, you know, if it's a bum on the street or a, a CEO of a company, everybody's the same. You know, we're all created by God and are equals. Um, the only way, the only thing that's different is, is the way you treat people, the way people treat you. Well, I would say, you know, to contribute to that, you know, when you guys get to the NFL, you know, they make you guys seem larger than life. You're on television, you know, they right. What do you eat? What do you drive? What do you do every day? And it's zooming in on your face and you're on prime television and you know, it's a multi million dollar, billion dollar marketing plan placed behind you guys that, you know, when you see someone in the NFL, you're like, Oh wow, man, you're in the NFL or you was in the NFL or you're going to the NFL. So people kinda that's kinda funny that you say some people go over the top with bragging about themselves or measure up or they become intimidated. So, yeah. but, but now the question that, you know, financially, it seems like you did pretty well with planning to leave for 12 years and now you're just, you know, hanging out fishing and just being dead and husband. Now, right. yeah, I was, uh, I was, um, I was always, you know, um, I, I think the be- best thing that I did financially is that I kept it simple. I understood, I made a budget. Um, every year based off of my lifestyle and my income and the things I wanted to get out of whatever I was making that year. Now it started lower my, my rookie my rookie contract, you know, you're as a rookie, you're not making near as much money. And I remember my first game check, I was making like, like 7,000 a week. And, but that's, that's only, that's for the games you play. So that's 16 games. Plus a bye week, so seventeen checks, and um, I would take five thousand of that, and I'd put it into savings, and I'd take two, and I would go to my bills, and you know, my basically went into my checking account. Now, as the years go on, and you start making more money, that obviously changes. You know, that number changes, but the philosophy that the majority of it is going to go to savings, and a portion of it goes into your checking and kind of your lifestyle, it goes up as, as your salary goes, as you, as you get to be a veteran and you start making more money. Um, but I never, I never, I never deviated from that, from that plan. You know, I never changed from, you know, I didn't look at my salary as what they had slotted in my contract. I looked at it as no, what, what am I paying myself to live off of? And the rest of it is all going to, whether I have a, a real estate plan or just my say, most of it is just go straight into saving mm-hmm. um, or my, or my portfolio. And, and I did that for my entire 12 year career. Okay. Now, when you say you made investments, what type of investments did you make? If you don't mind me uh, asking. Well, you know, I made some dumb ones early. Um, you know, I, I, I had a financial advisor that was trying to get me into some outside stuff outside of just my portfolio. Uh, and I, you know, I, I, one of them was a, a product that they use for. Um, it was a um, it was a product they use in construction. They spray this formula or this solution on the frame of houses, and it was supposed, to, you know, termites couldn't eat all this junk. You anyway, know, luckily I didn't invest that much money in it. I ended up getting it, getting the money out of it. Um, but I did that, and then, but as my career went on, I mainly just real estate. You know, I, I did um, had a couple of real estate deals. Just we bought some dirt in some areas and. Baldwin County and I have a buddy that owns a company in Texas that I'm a, a, a silent partner um, with him. Uh, but outside that, I mean, the vast majority of my stuff is just, um, you know, I would call it not not sexy, not, not mm. something fun to talk about. I have a bond no, ladder. And... No, that's uh, that's actually pretty good to hear, you know, as far as, you know, getting involved with real estate. Because, you know, so often we hear stories of NFL, you know, veterans that are not doing too well. With Yeah, so much- yeah, yeah. Go, oh, ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, yeah, um, you know, you, 
everybody wants to talk about the bad stories. Everybody wants to tell, talk about the stories of the guys that, you know, that, that blow all their money and they buy all these crazy cars and houses and travel and this and that. And, um, you know, I would say that, that um, obviously those are the fun ones to talk about. That's what people like to, you know, they always kind of want to use it as a knock, you know, to all oh, those dumb athletes or whatever. But, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I'd be willing to say that the majority of the teammates I've had over the years have been, have been uh, there's been just as many of them who have been either have every dime they've made since they played or have made more. There's just as many as those guys as are guys that are, that are, that are struggling and blew their money, but nobody wants to talk about the guys that have gone on and, and um, either just live off their savings and live a, a modest lifestyle, or they got into outside deals, started companies. They went on and got a job or went into coaching or whatever. Um, and they're, and are do, and do really well with it financially. Mm-hmm. But that's a little different, Andre. You know, I'm different. I like to highlight you guys to say, hey, you right. know what? You've done some good stuff. You know, not everybody. Because what happened is the outside world is we're not in the league. We're nowhere near close to being in the league. All we know is what the media push out there. And the media right. usually right. jumps onto the stories of, oh, look, this guy blew everything. He has nothing and blah, blah. And you hear that story over and over. You think, you know, well, we're the good ones. And since you don't see the good ones, you would just assume that, wow, all those guys in the NFL just blow all their money. Right. So Yeah, you know, that's exactly right. And most of the guys that are good with their money, they're not going to tell you they're good with their money. They're not going <laughs> to tell you how much money they have. They don't dress or act in a way. Um, you know, I got teammates um, that I played with that, that um, you know, they, they made, you know, $30, $40 million in contracts and saved every penny. They've started gyms and other outside companies, if you met them, I mean, they have workout pants on and driving a, a pickup truck and just normal as they can be. Um, but yeah, those guys are, are not real fun to talk about, but there's a bunch of them out there. Jared, are you describing yourself without telling us? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I mean, I'm not going to act like, you know, I'm living a trailer or anything, you know, I mean, I, I, I live a lifestyle that, that I can afford. Um, I keep everything within my means, um, but I'm also in, enjoy life. You know, I, I, I um, set aside enough money to where if my wife wants to go out to a nice dinner, I'm not going to complain about the price of the steak. Or, you know, if she wants to go somewhere for a weekend and we're going to get, you know, I'm not going to complain about it. You know, we, we're just going to talk that up as, as a life experience and, 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 and we're going to enjoy life. Um, but, um, but yeah, there's, 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 there's nothing wrong with enjoying life and, and, um, you know, and enjoying, you know, your, your hard work, but it's got to all be within your means. Okay. Well, that's good. You know, I'm very uh, glad to hear that. You know, one thing I did want to ask you too, is, you know, uh, what about your personal life? Do you have, you know, you're married, you have kids, and anything like that? Yeah, yeah, I'm married. I got two little girls. Okay. Um, been married to my wife for, uh, dude, how long have I been married? 13 years, I guess. I don't know. You think about it there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> but now the question I have now is is there anything that you look back over your NFL career and say, man, I wish I would have done this different, or I wish somebody would have told me this? But somebody out there who's listening to this that may be getting ready to go to the league or that may be, you know, getting ready to play in the national championship, college football national championship, that's getting ready to go into that meat market, like you said, what advice would you right. give them? Uh, financially? Yeah, financially. Financially, right. Yeah. And personal, too. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I really wouldn't change a whole lot about my career. I think uh, – I think personally, as an athlete, I would have, I wish I would have known about you know, nutrition and things, you know, known how to take care of my body earlier in my career. Um, you know, um, you know, I didn't learn that stuff till, you know, four or five years in the league. I mean, you know, we didn't, you know, to me, you know, eating good carbs and protein was beer and chicken wings, <laughs> you know, and then, <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then once I got once I once I got in the NFL and you, you got, I got a personal trainer and learned how to eat properly and nutrition and all this stuff, you know, it made me a better player. I wish I'd learned that earlier in my career. Uh, financially, I was fortunate to where the 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 dumb deals that 
that um, the, uh, the few dumb deals I got into, I was able to get my money out. And the dumb deals that I was that I was presented with, because you get presented with a ton of stuff. I mean, I can't tell you the amount of uh, ideas and get rich schemes, and you know, guys coming to anytime a guy walks up to you and says, "I'm gonna make you rich," I don't walk away. Um, <laughs> Good advice. Um, yeah, but um, all, the vast majority of them I never followed through with, and I, and I'm thankful for that, you know, but. Um, so financially, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change a whole lot. You know, I would, I would, uh, I would, you know, I wish I was a little more business savvy, you know, cause I have a financial advisor and stuff, but, um, but like I said, I, I keep things, keep things simple. I, I don't, I, I don't have any debt. Um, I, I whittled down any debt that I did have, you know, my first six years of my career, and been living debt free ever since. And because of that, I can live debt free forever. So, um, you know, I, I would, I would, I wouldn't change a whole lot about my, my financial career. Okay. Well, that's very good advice that you gave out. Keep it in simple, invest it into things that you possibly know about. And, you know, you want to do great things in real estate with investing into tangible things that you know about, you know, or whatever. Because, you know, I always, you ever thought about, like, getting a franchise or anything like that? Getting a franchise? Yeah, like a franchise, like, I don't know, a Dairy Queen, a Subway, a McDonald's, or something like that? Yeah, I mean, there, there, there's, some, there's, some, there's some good deals you can get, get into. Um, you know, I, I, don't, I, don't really, um, I don't really look into them mm-hmm. um, personally, but, um, you know, there, there are some... Some uh, good franchises out there that are that are uh, sound investments for investors, and you can get a, a pretty safe return on your dollar. Um, you know, like a lot of McDonald's, if they're run correctly, um, mm-hmm. you know, are very are 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 can be super good investments. But you know, I, I would say the the main thing that you need to do um, as far as investing is is have a good CPA. You know, have a good financial advisor, somebody that you c- can trust. And they don't have to be a sports specific investor. You know, the minute you start going through the draft process, all these guys are going to come out of the woodwork and they're going to start recruiting these players to come and invest their money with them. And a lot of them are saying, you know, I'm going to pay your bills for you. I'm going to handle your taxes for you. I'm going to do all this stuff. And it's going to be at a super inflated rate. Don't ever let anybody pay your bills. Always pay your own bills so you know what's going out every day. Uh-huh. And then don't ever sign a power of attorney that's going to let somebody say, look, sign this power of attorney, and I'm going to take your money, and I'm going to handle it for you. Always know where every penny is going. It doesn't have to be anything super glamorous. You know, like me, I had a sports-specific um, uh, advisor. I fired him before I got a dime because I saw the writing. They were going to charge me like thirty grand just to do my taxes. You know, that wasn't going to count what I had to pay Uncle Sam. That was for him to hit my taxes. I was going to, he was going to pay me, I had to pay him like 30 grand. And I found that out. Plus, he was going to charge me like 2 and 3% to invest. My, and I realized, like, this is a racket, you know. And then I just went, I knew, I knew I had a friend in college. His dad had some money. And I was like, who's your dad use? And he used this guy with Morgan Keegan. And I went and met him. And he's just a, just a good old guy, just a real smart investor, very conservative. Didn't say anything super sexy. Never told me he was going to make me rich. And he ended up being my financial advisor for a long time until he retired. And when I left him, I went and got another guy that was very similar, you know. But you got to be careful of anybody that's out hunting you, that's out pursuing you, um, because they're not doing it for nothing. They're they're being that aggressive and taking you to dinner and going to all the, do all this stuff for a reason because they're going to make money on the back end. Okay, so it was uh, so that sports agent sounded like he was going on the sports advisor sounded like he was going to hook you right on up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they're, 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 the agent's totally different. You know, the agent, he's going to make his three percent. He handles your contract. You know, I'm talking about I'm talking about just financial, financial. advisor. Yeah. yeah. Now you know. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, Jerry. No, 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 that was it. Now the question is now after football, life after football. What is life after football for Jerry Johnson? Well, I mean, you know, um, financially, is that what you're talking about? Well, 
know, you know, financially just over my everyday life. Yeah, just everyday life. Like, what did you get into? Anything in detail? Or you just like, hey, yeah. I'm just keep it simple. Just do a little fishing and, you know. Right. Well, I'll say this. Retirement's tough for everybody, especially the longer you play in the NFL, the harder it's going to be when you get out because, you know, it, it, when, when you're in, it's not reality. I mean, you your whole life, the best example or the best analogy I've heard describing life in the NFL or retirement in general is that life in the NFL is like a road. Travel down the road, you got signs, people telling you which way to go. Uh, you have, everything is built around, your whole life is structured, even the off season. You know, your daily routine of working out, you know, your your new nutrition plan, you know, going to off season program, then you're going to mini camp, then you got your plan, your, your schedule for the summer, you know, working up to training camp and training camp. And, but through the season, that everything is laid out in front of you, and you just have to travel down this road and not run it off into the dip. Retirement is like traveling in an open field with <laughs> nothing but time, opportunity, and resources to go any direction you want. But there's nothing in your past that has trained you to know which way to go. I mean, you you can it's 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 really paralyzing your first couple months out when you realize that. I could go work out, but I don't have to go work out. You know, I could, I could, I could start a business, you know, but do I know how to run this business? You know, people, you, know you could go, you could start a restaurant. You could go get a job. You could get into coaching. You could get into personnel. You could, I mean, the, the, the resources or the opportunities are endless and you can afford essentially to do anything. I mean, I had a guy who, Come to me and talk about buying a car dealership. Oh, that sounds good. What the hell do I know about running a car dealership? You know, well, let's go do this. Let's go. Back. And so it's it's paralyzing on knowing which way to go. Um, so I stuck with what I know and what I'm passionate about. I had a radio show when I was in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. So I got into doing radio again. And that's been fun. I get to travel a little bit. I get to stay in contact with the team. Watch a little film. You know, it's, it's great. I grew up fishing. Fishing is a passion of mine. So I started a charter company. I don't make a lot of money on it, but the uh, fishing and having a boat is expensive, and I get to run enough trips to where all that, all my activities are tax deductible. I can ride all, all off under the business. So that yes. became um, an advantage of mine to to basically fund my hobby. Um, and then the other thing is my family. I, I, I you know I'm passionate about hanging out with my girls and getting involved in their sports and different things and. So basically what I'm saying, you, you, when you get out, if you don't have the same passion about something else in life other than football, as you, if you're not as passionate about that as you were about football, you're going to struggle when you get out of the NFL. It's going to be tough for you. Mm. So you got to kind of figure out what you want to do. Maybe you want to, you know, you got all this time on your hand. You can like, I could go work out. I don't have to go work out. And, you know, just – but that's good. So tell us about your radio show. What got you in the radio? Uh, I had a show when I was in Baltimore. I had a show for uh, for three years on our flagship station for the Ravens, uh, WBA, WBAL 98 Rock. And I uh, had a show there for a while. It was a lot of fun. Then when I retired, they asked me to come back and continue the show. And I've been doing that ever since. And now I've um, recently moved um, into the booth with our um, – with the play-by-play guy on WBAL, and I'm the analyst in the booth. So I've been doing that the last uh, the last four games of the season. Um, so it's 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 been good. It's uh, I, I don't get paid a lot of money, but I get paid a little bit. And it's mm-hmm. it's fun to travel, and, and it's just another thing that um, you know I'm big on getting up early and having a plan for the day. You know, having something to get up and go do, something to look forward to. And the radio has just added another thing in my day that that i get to get up and have something to to get out and accomplish now with that being said what made you uh what happened to the ravens this season (laughs) uh well Well, it was a pretty lucky season i mean they started out um defense played pretty good early uh had a pretty bad three or four game stretch um, got behind, and they, they had a bunch of injuries and stuff. Quarterback wasn't playing real good, and then they rallied. They got healthy. Quarterback started playing better. Got on a winning streak. Um, got back in the hunt. Was actually slotted in the fifth seed. All they did was win the last game, and 
and uh, they they slipped up in Cincinnati. That's what Cincinnati the the, really the Bengals. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's one of those things, man. You always got to be careful of your division rivals. Yeah, because it's always like a playoff game to them. It doesn't matter if they are. Oh, and 16 is still that one game they got in them. That's right. But, Jerry, I got to ask this question. If, is there anything you would like to leave with anybody out there that's listening or that's watching this live? What is it something that Jerry Johnson wanted them to take away? Well, I mean, I, I think the, uh, the main thing, and being that it's a financial show, uh, if there's any young guys out there listening, you know, never, never forget who you are. Never let your money or whatever you make or whoever you become in the NFL, don't let them change you. Always be true to who you are, true to your family. Um, always live within your means. And, um, you know, it doesn't matter if you're, you know, worth 100 bucks or $100 million. You know, we're all here. Everybody else Everybody else the same. And uh, just enjoy life, man. Okay. Well, you know, I'm going to tell you what I learned from you was to keep it simple, right? Stick into uh, what you know, uh, maintain humble. And the biggest thing that he said in the beginning, he started a budget. And he kept it yeah. simple. Starting a budget, uh, keeping it simple, investing into what he know. He didn't get into nothing that's super quick. Hey, I'm going to get you rich. I'm about to get rich in the next six months. See if you're going to jump on this train with me. He just stuck with what he knew and felt comfortable with real estate, and he found an advisor that uh, helped him out as well. So that's glad to hear. Now, well, I, tell you, I tell you, one of the best, one of the best words of advice a coach told me my rookie year was when we were going home for the off season. He said, "I don't care what anybody presents to you. No real estate deal. No." marketing plan, nothing that anybody can present you will make you more money than you can make out there on that green grass, on that football field. So if you want to make some money, if you want to, you know, do well in life, it's true. go home, work out, stay in shape, take care of your body, and focus on football because that is the greatest investment you'll ever make if you have the opportunity to play in the NFL because everybody wants to go out and make money elsewhere, go work out, you know, take care of your body, you know, keep it simple, do what you do best. Don't even go out there trying to start a chain of restaurants or whatever else, you know, mm-hmm. stick with what you know. That's true. Cause not too many places can beat the NFL paycheck. <laughs> so, <laughs> but definitely Jerry Johnson, thank you for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm really honored. If anybody out there wants to, Talk to you or get in contact with you. What's the way you tell them to reach out to you? If they want to reach out to you, if you want to be reached out to. Yeah, I don't really want to be reached out. <laughs> <laughs> I had to throw that in there. I'm like, maybe he might want to yeah. be like, uh, yeah. Don't send me. Yeah. So, but okay. Yeah, that's pretty much. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really do. I do Instagram. I guess you can check out Instagram, but other than that, I don't want to do Twitter. Anything else? Okay. Well, Jerry Johnson, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for dropping the gems. As always, guys, this is the Prince of Investing. My name is Prince Dykes. Thank you guys for tuning in. Until the next video, book, podcast, whatever you see me do crazy around the globe, peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.